would sing uh, a melodic part that she's very attached to, and, she, and I would either play it on the flute or maybe be ready for the guitar, because the full band has also guitar and percussion. And, um, and then sometimes we'll just bring like, uh, songs that are completely bare, just, uh, just the, the melody and the lyrics. And I would be like, oh, let's find this cool line, let's play with it. But I would say that 85% of what you heard is my improvisation, and 15% is written. Like I, I'm, I'm an improviser, so the way I like to, to feel a song is that I like to always, every time I play it, I like to play it a little bit differently. I'm a jazz musician, so for me that's how music lives. Uh, for improvisation, but so that's the answer. So, when for someone who is trying to who's trying to lead a band or whatever, what would be the um, right thing to do when you're trying to um, have each member express themselves? Mm. That's a great question. Part. Amazing questions. <laughs> what the instrument do you play? I just sing. You sing. So. So you're asking as a singer? As a, I mean, yeah, like how do I approach them? Like, I need you to write this part. Don't allow anyone, anyone else's um, part and decisions they make, you know, the notes they make to affect your, your part. Right, but. Put yourself into it. Yeah, that's a good question. It's asking how, as a band leader, I think it's both for singers and for instrumentalists. How you can have uh, the band play with you, how can you tell them what you want, your vision, but also make them keep their own personalities, right? Am I, am I correct? Um, so that's an interesting question because for me, the key is to pick the right musicians. That's like, first of all, the key. Uh, if you pick people that you know, you trust them, you trust their musical decisions, you trust that they would care about the music, you trust that they're uh, sensitive, you already have you've done 50% of what you need to do. Um, and then um, you can make your own charts or have someone that maybe if you don't like to make charts or you're not good at it, you can have a musical director or someone making those charts for you. Um, and those charts can be lead sheets. You can just have chords, uh, kind of groove you're looking for, what's the tempo, and, and then you just come to the rehearsal and you're like, okay, let's read this, you know? And they play it and it's probably completely different than anything you envision. <coughs> And you just have to let go of your vision for a second and let them play it, which is a hard part, you know, not to want to control it. Believe me, it's hard. <laughs> um, and then after they play it, you say, okay, this was awesome, but what I really hear is this. So you have, for you, you have to come prepared. You have to know maybe what kind of groove you feel like for the drums, uh, what kind of bass line you hear, and if you hear a specific bass line, write it down. But also, it's good to remember that those people who've been practicing their whole lives in their instruments probably know something, a thing or two about their instrument. So it's good to also let them bring their input and say, you know, I like what you say, but actually I think if I do this on the drums, it will work, and they can bring something you never thought of. So it's a, for me, it's a creative process. I think that's how it 